All right, let's look at the cardiovascular system, better known as your circulatory system. Now, your circulatory system, just like any other system in your body, is made up of a couple of organs and tissues that work together to perform a particular function. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at particularly that, right? Good. So, what is this purpose, the sole purpose of your circulatory system? Now, the circulatory system, it delivers, remember, it delivers oxygen, which is an essential gas for cellular respiration, and glucose, which, which is an essential organic compound for cellular respiration to different cells of your body or different tissues. Just imagine your legs, when you're running, they need glucose and oxygen to perform respiration, the cellular respiration, so that they can produce energy. Now, your circulatory system, mainly your blood, delivers all of these, all of the above, which is your oxygen and glucose. And then subsequently, in the same token, your circulatory system will remove the waste products such as your carbon dioxide from those muscles that are produced or, or perform cellular respiration. Remember, cellular respiration is just your glucose. So your glucose reacts with oxygen to produce energy and the byproducts of that reaction will be H2O and carbon dioxide. So your circulatory system will deliver these two reactants of respiration for you to produce energy as you are running to your teacher's class before you are late and then as a byproduct it will produce this. Now the, the function of your circulatory system is to get these, this carbon dioxide to the lungs so that you can exhale it just like we saw in the previous lesson now your circulatory system also functions in fighting diseases but trans by transporting your white blood cells throughout the body so just think of the following tissues that we're going to look at that are needed for your circulatory system as the roads the vehicles and the goods right good so let's start off what is needed for your circulatory system well, blood. We need blood for your circulatory system. Blood will be that vehicle that transports everything. It's like your logistic company, right? Then we'll need the roads where those vehicles can actually travel. And that will be your blood vessel. Remember, vessel means a container. So all of these tubes in your body that contain blood, they are known as blood vessels. So these are the roads for the vehicles, which is blood to move around. Good. And then you are going to need a heart for your circulatory system to function properly. Right. Let's get into it. Let's start with blood. So with blood, we need to understand blood so that we can understand your whole entire circulatory system so starting with blood plasma blood plasma basically is the liquid part of blood right it, co it will contain substances such as your glucose amino acids vitamins urea proteins fats so forth and so forth right and then your blood will also contain blood platelets that is well blood platelets function in blood clotting when you cut yourself and then you don't bleed out to death well, you wouldn't bleed out to death from a small little cut, but the reason your blood clots is because of these blood platelets, right? Good. And then we have cells in your blood, your blood cells. Your blood cells include your red blood cells. Now, they are responsible for carrying gases such as oxygen to the muscles and then carrying carbon dioxide back from your muscles to the lungs so that you can exhale it so they transport gases the actual function is to transport gases your white blood cells right which is part of your blood are involved in your immune system they are there as the respondents of foreign invaders to your body so these are the main components of your blood your blood plasma white blood cells red blood cells and blood platelets that's what they function in good now coming to the blood vessels now we have three types of blood vessels that we're going to look at right blood vessels we're going to start with an artery what are arteries arteries are blood vessels that carry blood 
what type of blood oxygenated meaning oxygen rich blood so oxygenated will mean oxygen rich blood and what is the direction away from the heart so usually all of your arteries carry blood away from the heart what type of blood oxygenated blood but there's an exception to all of these arteries no? there's the, there's an exception and that exception is known as the pulmonary artery now the pulmonary artery is the artery that carries deoxygenated blood away from the heart to the lungs and it makes sense blood that carries a, a lot of carbon dioxide must go towards the heart so that it can go drop off that carbon dioxide so that you can exhale it so that is the only artery in your body it still carries blood away from the heart but what type of blood deoxygenated blood another thing about arteries so these these are just the functional parts of arteries now what are the structural components of arteries if you notice arteries have got these thick walls so arteries have thick muscular walls why are they there they are there to withstand the high pressure at which your the left side of the heart will pump blood away from the heart with and as a result of these thick walls arteries will have your narrow or small lumen lumen is just the space inside your arteries so they will have small lumens as a result of these thick walls right now the second blood vessels that we're going to look look at are veins most kids that, that are asked most of the time they know veins and they don't know arteries well here's a different here's a difference a vein is a blood vessel as well it carries what type of blood deoxygenated blood direction towards the heart so it's it's the blood vessel that carries all this deoxygenated blood what do we mean by deoxygenated oxygen poor blood it doesn't have a lot of oxygen this it is blood so it has a lot of carbon dioxide so it carries it back to the heart from the heart it goes to it goes to the lungs so a blood a vein is a blood vessel that carries deoxygenated blood towards the heart but there's an exception as well the exception is the pulmonary vein which carries oxygenated blood oxygen rich blood right from the lungs it makes sense no? from the lungs to the heart because in the lungs there's gaseous exchange right whereby blood becomes oxygenated so that blood needs to go back to the left side of the heart so it must be oxygenated so the pulmonary vein is the only vein in the body that carries oxygenated blood all the other veins carry deoxygenated blood right now those are the functional uh, parts of your your uh, your vein now if you look at a vein a slightly different from an artery let's look at an artery a vein an artery a vein right now a vein has got these little things over here appendages over here known as valves valves their main function they basically stop the back flow of blood what do we mean so basically if if I have two directions, direction A and direction B, blood is more likely to flow towards direction B. And then when it tries to flow via direction A, the valves will stop it. Similar to those doors at, at the back, where, whereby they only allow you to go one direction. So basically valves allow blood to flow only in one direction. So those are valves that is the structural difference between a valve and an artery right now another structural difference if you look at it is that veins have got thinner muscular walls they have thinner muscular walls as a result they will have a a, a wider lumen so the space inside is wider because why they have thinner muscular walls they don't have to withstand the, the pressure at which the blood uh, the heart pumps blood so that is your vein so that is the functional and structural differences between your heart and vein 
Now let's look let's look at them side side by side, comparing veins and arteries. If you look at the 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 artery, A will be your artery, B will be your vein. So B is the vein, A for artery. They have thick walls and these and the veins will have thinner walls. As a result, the lumen is narrow in arteries and the lumen is wide, wider in the veins. And then, unlike arteries, veins have got a valve to stop the backflow of blood by allowing blood to only move in one direction. Now, this is basically a difference be between them. If you, are if you are gonna look at the difference between your uh, arteries and veins. So we start with a, with a functional uh, comparison. That is the direction in which blood flows in an artery is uh, blood will flow away from the heart in veins towards the heart walls muscular walls in arteries are thicker in veins they are thinner lumen smaller or narrow in arteries larger in veins blood pressure is higher in arteries that's why they have the thicker muscular walls and lower in veins then veins have got valves arteries do not all right now we come to the smallest blood vessels in your in your body which are capillaries the smallest blood vessels in your in your body these are one cell thick that's how thin they are these vessels bring oxygen and nutrients towards your tissues or cells in exchange they will take carbon dioxide and other nitro waste such as nitrogenous waste away from the tissues right so or cells so these are Capillaries, the smallest, 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 smallest blood vessels in your body. So, in in summary, if you if you were to compare all of them uh, by size, shape, and function, they are completely different from each other. So, those are your blood vessels. Now, brings us to the heart, right? So. When you look at the heart, that is the third and last component that we're going to look at when you look at your circulatory system before we actually do circulation. The heart, on the outer side of the, of the heart, you'll notice if this was another image, you'll notice that there's some fat uh, around the heart to avoid mechanical shock, basically. And you can see a couple of blood vessels such as the aorta or the aorta, whichever one you want to call it, your... Outside, you can see your vena covers, your arteries and veins of the heart. The arteries and veins of the heart are known as the coronary artery or coronary vein, or the coronary vein, right? Good. So that is the external structure of the heart. At your level in grade 9, you just need to know those simple parts. Now, let's look at the inside of the of the heart. Now, let's, let me draw my heart over here. Mm. Now, let's say we have a heart. This is, we want to look at the internal structure of the heart. First things first, the heart is divided into two parts, right? The left side of your heart and the right side of your heart. Now, why is it divided into two parts? And what divides it into two parts? Well, there's a thick muscular wall in between the two sides, the left and the right, known as the septum. Those that do septum piercing will notice that when you, do, when you pierce your nose, it's called the septum piercing because you pierce the septum of your nose. That septum, the part that you pierce, divides both your right and your left side of your nose. Similarly, the heart has a thick mus muscle called the septum. Yeah? Has a thick muscle called the septum. And then what is, the, there's something special about the muscle of the heart. The muscle of the heart is known as the cardiac muscle. It's a special involuntary muscle. Remember, when I say it is involuntary, meaning you do not control what your, your, heart, your heart does. You can't tell it, okay, uh, stop. I want to skip a bit because I saw this beautiful lady. No, you cannot do that. The heart works involuntary from you. So the septum separates the left and right of your 
heart now why is it essential to separate the left and right side of your heart because the left side I like to abbreviate it as LO so the left side carries oxygenated blood and then RD the right side of your heart carries deoxygenated blood meaning your oxygen poor blood that is the left and right side of your heart yeah? great now your heart further has four chambers we say that your heart has got four chambers now the top two chambers are known as the atria or atria in many one atrium so these are your atria the bottom two chambers are known as the ventricles yeah? your ventricle yeah? so how do we separate them since this is in the right side of your heart you're gonna say this is the right atrium and this is the left atrium right great now what are the functions of each now the top two chambers these two they receive their main function is to receive blood depending on which side an atrium will receive either oxygenated or deoxygenated blood if it's the right atrium it receives deoxygenated blood oxygen poor blood and if it's the left since LO left oxygenated your left atrium will receive what your oxygenated blood then the function of your ventricle is to pump blood out of the heart that's their main function so once blood enters the left vent left atrium it will move this is oxygenated blood into the left ventricle yeah? and the left ventricle will pump oxygenated blood out of the heart into different parts of the body and once deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium it will go through the right uh, ventricle and then the right ventricle will pump it out of the heart towards the lungs right so in between your ventricle and atrium they are there are valves in between them those valves are gonna stop the backflow of blood for example if if blood moves from the left atrium to the left ventricle it cannot flow back into the left atrium similarly if blood moves from the right atrium to the right ventricle it cannot go back into the right atrium right so these are two four chambers of the heart the top two being the atrium and the bottom two being the ventri ventricles right good let's go back to our images so this is the outer part of the heart and then the inner side of the heart this is the actual image of the heart so it is very easy to to get lost when they give you a structure like this what you need to do first you just determine which side is which so this will be my left and then this will be my right side so if i know that this is my left side i know that i have a left atrium and the bottom one will be my left ventricle then i have my right atrium and my right ventricle and here are the two semi lunar valves right great now that we know all of this i will come back to the structure i want us to do a bit of circulation so let's take our heart bit of a bigger one let's take our heart partition it into the left and right side and then your right atrium left atrium right ventricle 
and then left ventricle right good and then we are gonna go here let's say that this is your tissue yeah? your muscle tissue these are your tissue cells now as you are running I'm about to do circulation as you're running what accumulates in your muscle tissue your carbon dioxide accumulates right good now from the right side of your heart yeah? from the left side sorry from the left side of your heart yeah? a certain blood vessel known as the aorta aorta yeah? the aorta remember the aorta is an artery why is it an artery it's carrying blood away from the heart the main artery that carries blood away from the heart is called the the an artery now a specific name is known as the aorta the aorta will branch into many other arteries that go for example towards your brain uh, some will go towards your let's say your your kidneys so those those will be your renal artery so forth and so forth né? but before an artery remember it reaches a a tissue it branches into smaller arterioles so the smaller arteries are known as arterioles and the smaller arterioles branch into even smaller blood vessels known as capillaries the, the smallest blood vessels and then they will line your muscle tissue now mind you these are carrying a whole lot of oxygen yeah. a whole lot of oxygen is carried inside the blood in your capillaries it comes from the left side of your heart that means that blood must be oxygenated now what happens a process the process of diffusion will take place because there's a high concentration of oxygen in the capillaries and there's a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the tissue ne? a process of diffusion will take place what is diffusion a movement of molecules from a place of high concentration to a place of lower concentration as a result oxygen will diffuse into the tissue the carbon dioxide will diffuse into the blood in the capillaries it's sort of like a, an exchange hence it's called gaseous exchange in the tissue after many of these of these oxygen molecules will move into the in, into the tissue why why do they need uh, to to diffuse into the tissue because the tissue needs to perform cellular respiration and then the tissue needs to get rid of this waste which is carbon dioxide hence carbon dioxide will diffuse into the blood now the blood is no longer oxygenated after this diffusion takes place the blood now becomes deoxygenated now, after it becomes deoxygenated, meaning it has less oxygen by now, yeah? it becomes less ox uh, it, it, it has less concentration of oxygen. Your capillaries now, as they leave the tissue, right, with a lot of carbon dioxide yeah? in the blood. The blood is now deoxygenated. Now, the capillaries will converge into venules. The venules will, will further converge into one main vein. And then where does this blood that is deoxygenated need to go? It needs to go to which side of the heart? Yes, the right side of the heart because the right side of the heart carries deoxygenated blood. So these vessels around the body from your lower part of the body will converge and then from one main vein that goes to the right atrium remember the atria receive blood ne? Mm -hmm. and then all the veins from the upper part of the body will converge into another main vein that goes towards so two veins basically join the right atrium delivering deoxygenated blood and these veins remember these are veins ne? these are vein this is a vein and this is a vein but they have a specific name the specific name of these two veins are known as the vena cava the vena cava now 
the one at the top, because it's at the top, it carries blood from the upper part of your body. It's at the top. If you're at the top, you are superior. So it is known as the superior vena cava. If you're, at the, if you're not superior, you are inferior. The one from the lower part of your body is called the inferior vena cava. Right? Great. Now, once the blood enters your right atrium, it will travel through the right atrium into the right ventricle through the, the valves. The valves, what are, they, what are they there for? To stop the backflow of blood back into the atrium. Yeah? Good. Now, the blood can never go towards uh, the left side while, while it's on the right because of the septum. Right? Good. Now, this blood is in the right ventricle. It needs to leave the right ventricle via a, a what? An artery. Ne? via an artery but this artery is weird why is it weird because we said an artery is a blood vessel that carries oxygenated blood away from the heart why is this artery carrying deoxygenated blood it is that exception that we are talking about it is the artery known as the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery is the only artery that carries your deoxygenated blood. Yeah? So, because of drawing uh, constraints, I cannot draw it here. So, let's draw it here. Where does the pulmonary artery need to go? Carrying deoxygenated blood. It needs to go to the lungs to drop off what? To drop off this uh, deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood, remember, contains a whole lot of carbon dioxide now before then the arteries will branch into small little pulmonary arterioles pulmonary arterioles will actually branch into your capillaries and then the capillaries now are lining the alveoli of your lungs remember from the last lesson we have the alveoli in your lungs, those little Essex, right? Great. Now, since there's a lot of carbon dioxide, high concentration of carbon dioxide in the capillaries, ne? the carbon dioxide will diffuse into the alveoli in the lungs, will diffuse. Now, when you inhale, you're going to inhale air. Ne? That air it's gonna carry a lot of oxygen. Now, you're gonna have a whole lot of oxygen in your alveoli. Yeah? A whole lot of oxygen in your alveoli. Now, what's gonna happen to that oxygen? Now watch, it's gonna diffuse into, into what? Into your Oxygen diffuses into the capillaries, making the blood oxygenated. Now the blood becomes oxygenated. Ne? After the blood becomes oxygenated, ne? so oxygen diffuses into the capillaries. Carbon dioxide will diffuse from the capillaries into the alveoli of the lungs. Now that makes the blood oxygenated. Now this blood full of oxygen, full of oxygen will now leave the lungs remember your little capillaries will converge into venules now which venules pulmonary venules and then they will com converge again into one main vein this vein is known as the pul pulmonary vein. Why the pulmonary vein? Because it comes from the lungs. This vein is carrying blood towards the heart and it will go to the left side of the heart. Here's something weird about it. We said that the definition of a vein is a blood vessel that carries deoxygenated blood towards the heart. But this one is carrying oxygenated blood. It is an exception. Ne? the one blood vessel or one vein that carries oxygenated blood 
that is the pulmonary vein. Be careful in test in tests. Teachers love asking about the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein. So once blood enters, it will move from the artery through the valves into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, it will go out via the aorta, that main artery, and to different parts of the body. And this whole process begins over and over and over again, right? Every single day. Now, so, to, so to wrap up, if they give you a structure like this, you can already you you can already identify your left from your right side. Usually, how I identify my left and right side. First of all, my left side, the left side of my heart, has got thicker muscular walls than the, than the right side of the heart. That be, that that uh, that is because your left ventricle needs to pump blood out at a high pressure into the arteries, right? And then I will identify a vein that carries blood from the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body and joins the right atrium. Those are your vena cava, inferior and uh, superior vena cava. And then the right ventricle will always be connected to your pulmonary artery because the pulmonary will take blood away from your right ventricle towards your lungs and that blood will come back oxygenated via the pulmonary vein which will connect to your left side and then blood goes out via the aorta right so basically this is a summary of how your circulation would take place right this is a practically a a flow diagram a flow chart that helps that could help you summarize your whole entire circulatory system right now let's look at the disorders of the circulatory system just like we've looked at disorders in the previous uh, systems right now i'm gonna start with atherosclerosis now atherosclerosis is a buildup of cholesterol or other fat deposits in or lipids if you might say on the walls of arteries remember those thick walls of arteries now they might because of your diet you might have a deposit of fats or lipids né? and then it causes an obstruction so so in a way it blocks blood flow in your coronary arteries or arteries that lead to your brain so what is the effect of this it might lead to stroke it might lead to mostly your heart failure or heart attack né? So what is heart attack and what is stroke? Let's start with a heart attack. A heart attack basically uh, occurs when there is a loss of blood supply. So uh, let's move this one. Oh, this guy doesn't want to move. Right. When there's loss of blood supply due to two things. Yeah? There might be a blockage that resulted from a blood clot or a blockage that resulted from atherosclerosis, a buildup of those uh, fat plaques. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if your coronary arteries are blocked, the arteries that transport oxygenated blood towards your heart, yeah? the muscle, the cardiac muscle will die and then you die yeah? if you are not saved. So that is heart, a heart attack. Right. Then a stroke, sometimes called the brain attack, occurs when something blocks the basically the pathway of oxygenated blood towards your brain so if these blood vessels are blocked and then they break because of what again because of cholesterol plaque or a, a, a lipid plaque or blood clots if they travel to your brain and block your arteries it might cause them to rupture or completely block blood supply that part of your brain dies and then that's what we call a stroke. Another one, uh, two of them actually, is your high blood pressure, which is also known as hyper, hyper, high, uh, hypertension. Now, occurs when the force of blood against the uh, walls of your arteries né? is too strong it's higher than normal so when blood is being pumped at a force that is higher than normal and then it exerts a force on your arterial walls that is higher than normal that is high blood pressure now low blood pressure 
basically is when the force is below the force that the blood is being pumped out of the left side of your heart is lower than normal that is hypo ne? lower hypo tension so in summary that is your circulatory system and all of its well most common disorders if there are ones that i did not discuss please leave a comment i will quickly go through them as you wish and leave any questions i'll be happy to basically answer your questions wow this has this lesson where i had a flow thank you very much